Okay, so we're going to talk about um, something called relative extrema. So relative extrema are the highest and lowest points in an interval. So we're going to look at some graphs. We're going to talk about what they look like and what it means. Uh, we have something called a relative maximum and a relative minimum. Okay, so relative means that we're looking at things that are close by. So close by. So a close by maximum. Okay, so what that means is that if I could find a point, and let's look at this point right here. If I could find a point on the graph that's higher than any points to the left or to the right, so it's higher than any points that are close by, then we would call this a relative max. Okay, it does not mean that it's the highest point on the entire graph, and we can look at that and tell that it's not the highest point on the entire graph, but it's higher than the points immediately to the left and immediately to the right. So it's higher than any points that are close by. So it's the highest point of all the points that are close by. We call this a relative maximum. Okay, so here we have a relative, let's say this point right here, lower than all the points that are immediately close by. So anything that's to the left or to the right, so really close by, it's smaller than all of those points. So we call this a relative minimum. Now there can be many relative minimums and many relative maximums. For example, this right here, this point is higher than any point that's close by, so we would call this a relative max. And this point looks like it's lower than all the points that are close by, so we would call this a relative minimum. All right. Now is it the absolute max? An absolute max would be the absolute highest point on the entire graph. Now you could say, let's say the, the graph stops here. If the graph stops here, this would be the absolute max of the entire graph because it's the highest point of all the points on the entire graph. Uh, you might call this one the absolute minimum because it's the lowest point on the entire graph. There's no point that we see that is lower. Of course, there are arrow, if there were arrows there, then that would be a different situation. But if those were closed fixed points, those would be the absolute highest and absolute lowest points on the entire graph. Alright, so here's something that's really important. Um, we're going to talk about something called a critical number. A critical number of a function is any number x in the domain, so that's important that it's in the domain, of f such that the derivative equals zero or the derivative does not exist. So we refer to a number that might give rise to a relative maximum or a relative minimum as a critical number. Okay, so you, if you see the word critical number in your books, that's what they're referring to. So let's look at a couple of graphs just to talk about this idea of a critical number and how we find relative maximums and relative minimums. All right. So let's look here. So our first graph, um, we're going to look at f of x equals x cubed. Now, let's just look at this for a minute without doing any calculations. When I look at this graph, I want to know, are we increasing or are we decreasing? And it looks like for the entire graph, as I move from left to right, that I'm going uphill, 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 uphill. I never stop increasing. So I would say that we are increasing for the entire graph. So increasing from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. I would say that we are increasing. Um, is there a relative max or a relative minimum? And we're going to assume here that the arrows are going up and down forever. And I would say on this particular graph, there is no relative extrema. There is no point that is higher than any other point around it, and there is no point that I could pick out that is lower than any point around it. Okay, so there is no relative extrema. You might think, well, what about this point right here? Well, if you pick out this point right here, it's higher than the points on the left, but it's not higher than the points on the right. So it would not be a relative max. It might be lower than the points on the right, but it's not lower than the points on the left, so it's not a relative minimum, so it's neither. So how do we find these critical numbers? How do we find the relative max and relative minimum? So according to our definition, we look for them by finding x values that make the first derivative equal zero, or where the first derivative does not exist.
So let's look at where the first derivative equals zero. So let's just kind of try this out. Let's find the first derivative, it's really easy. Uh, we're going to use our power rule, so that becomes 3x squared. Where does that first derivative equal zero? So we're going to take the first derivative, set it equal to zero. So we're going to solve, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Okay, 0 divided by 3 is 0. Take the square root of both sides, and we get x equals plus or minus 0, which of course is just 0. So what this is telling me is that x equals 0 may be a relative max or minimum. Now, it doesn't say that it is a relative max or relative minimum, but finding out where the first derivative equals zero could give us a number that is a relative max or relative minimum. Now, how would we decide whether or not it represents a relative max or relative minimum? Well, what we're going to do after we find those critical numbers, we're going to look to see what's happening to the left and to the right of that critical number. Okay, what's happening to the left? Are we increasing or decreasing? Well, it looks like the graph we said, as we move from left to right, the increasing, the graph was increasing, it was going up. As we look to the right, the graph is also increasing. So what we, what we want to see is a change from either increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. If there is not a change, if the graph goes up to the left of that point and then continues to go up to the right of that point, then we will have no relative extrema. So that will not be a relative max or a relative minimum. Okay, so therefore we're increasing for the entire interval, the entire graph, and we have no relative extrema. All right. So let's look at um, f of x equals x squared. And we want to find out, do we have a relative max or do we have a relative minimum anywhere along this graph? So according to um, our definition here, we want to find out where the first derivative equals zero. So let's do that. So let's first find the first derivative. Um, the first derivative here would be 2x. Let's set that first derivative equal to 0 and solve for x. So divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 0. So this would be our critical number. So what we're saying here is that this might be a relative max or a relative minimum. Let's test it out. So x equals 0 is right here. Now, you can tell from the graph, what do you think it is, relative max or relative minimum? Is it smaller than all the points around it? Is it lower than all the other points around it? Or is it higher than all the points around it? Well, definitely lower than all the points around it. So just by observation, we can see that this is a relative minimum. Now, how would we prove this basically analytically? What we want to know is what's happening to the left? The graph looks like it's going down, 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 so it's decreasing. So it decreases and then it hits a point where it stops decreasing. And then on the other side of that point, what does it do? Well, it starts to go back up, so it starts to increase. So what we're looking for is a switch from decreasing to increasing or from increasing to decreasing. So we need a switch. We need a switch from one to the other in order to have a relative maximum or a relative minimum. So that's kind of the key thing that we're looking for here. So we're going to find the critical numbers by basically what we're doing when we find out where the first derivative equals zero is kind of we're finding those level, those horizontal tangent lines. So if we have a horizontal tangent line, it could indicate that we have that switch from um, increasing, decreasing, or decreasing to increasing. So right here at this point, the slope is zero. And this, in this case, does give rise to a relative minimum. So we're looking for basically, when we look for where the first derivative equals zero, we're looking for a spot on the graph that has that horizontal tangent line. It indicates a leveling off of the graph at that point. Well, we need to test a little further to see if it really is a relative max or a relative minimum by seeing what's happening on either side of that point. Another thing that we care about and we haven't talked about yet is what about where the first derivative does not exist? Why would I care about that? Why is that something significant that we want to look for? And that's coming up here um, on the next page. So why do we look for x values uh, where the first derivative does not exist? So we're going to look at a couple of pictures here to help us with that idea. So when we look at this first picture, 
what we notice is that we definitely have what we would call a relative maximum. It is higher than all of the points to the left and to the right. So it's higher than all the points around it. Definitely a relative max. However, the first derivative is not zero here. The first derivative does not exist. When I look at the tangent line from the left, and then I look at a tangent line from the right, if the left and right hand limits don't match, remember that the first derivative would not exist. So in this case, at this particular point, since the tangent lines are not the same, the left and right hand limits don't match, then the first derivative at that point does not exist. But we notice that it is still a point that gives rise to a relative max. So we're going to look for places on the graph where maybe the first derivative does not exist. And at those points, that could be an important point for us, that relative max or relative min. Um, along the way, we could also find a point where the slope of that tangent line is undefined. And that's something else that we're going to, especially later, we're going to care about um, those particular points when we're in section 4.2. Okay, so remember that if the first derivative is undefined, that could also mean that we have a vertical tangent line at that particular point. Well, we've talked about that a little bit. So let's look at a, a bigger graph with a lot of places where the first derivative does not exist. So for example here, the first derivative would not exist because the slope from the left tangent line and the right tangent lines don't match. However, this would definitely be a relative max. So that would be a point that we would care about. Um, let's say right, um, let's say right here as well. That would be a relative minimum and another place where the graph does not have a first derivative because the left and right hand limits don't match and therefore the first derivative that has that limit definition, that first derivative would not exist there. All right, so there's lots of places along the graph that we care about where the first derivative does not exist that might give rise to those relative maxes and relative mins that we're going to be looking for in this section.